We have with God a covenant. That word covenant is not a a word that we use too much in Western society, but in other cultures, it's a very powerful word. A covenant is the, the strongest bond between two individuals. Amen. For instance, marriage. We think of marriage as a contract. Amen. Am I going in and out? You hear me okay? Okay. We think of marriage. When we think of marriage, we think of, of a marriage contract. But a marriage really isn't a contract. A marriage is a covenant between a man and a woman in God's economy. Amen. I'm not saying that to disparage anybody else. I'm just saying, I'm just talking about what's in the word of God. So we have a covenant with God. And when we receive salvation, when we come into the family of God, we enter into a covenant with God. Or or, or actually more specifically, God enters into a covenant with us that cannot be broken. Amen. And he says it like this. He says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And this thing was ratified through the shed blood of Jesus. Jesus paid the price so we can be in covenant with God. Amen? So when we talk about our covenant, we talk about our salvation, we basically talk about salvation in five particular areas. We talk about our salvation in terms of our deliverance, our safety, our soundness of mind, our preservation, which is long life, and our healing. Today, I want to focus on the protection plan of God. There is a plan of protection in God's word. Amen? You got Psalm 91. If you got a chance to put it up on the board, Jim, I would appreciate you put that, that, that scripture up on the board. Psalm 91, New King James Version. If you have it, your Bible say Amen. I'm going to read it in its entirety, and I'm going to go back, and we're going to take this thing apart. Amen? We're just going to take the word apart. We're just going to do the word. Amen? Amen. Psalm 91, verse 1 says that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him I will trust. It goes on to say in verse 3, it says, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler, and from the perilous pestilence he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday, A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague or calamity come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways, And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Go back to to, to, to the beginning. It says, he who dwells in the secret place of who? The most high. Amen. That's a very interesting phrase, dwells in the secret place of the most high. The reason we should really think about that is because... If you cannot identify with the most high God, amen, you are living in a a state of low self-esteem. 
Amen? That's why we have the word, because we identify in the word of God. And the word of God is the only thing that can break the bond of low self-esteem that has been perpetrated on us, particularly in this particular society, for hundreds of years. Amen? We've gone through a lot. So it says, he, it says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. But what does that mean? When we talk about the Most High God, God lives where? He lives in heaven. Amen? Jesus lives in heaven. So how can I dwell in the secret place of the Most High God if God is in heaven and I'm here on the earth? Amen? So let's establish that he is in fact in heaven or he lives in heaven. And I, I, look at, I look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. I'll read it to you. You don't have to turn to it. But I'm just going to read it. It says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know, not think, not hope, not guess, but know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us, who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, here's the key, which he worked in Christ when what? He raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand, where? In the heavenly places, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. So God and Jesus Christ clearly are in the heavenly realm. Jesus in the heavenly realm, in the, is in the heavenly realm physically. Not spiritually. He is a man who is physically in heaven at the right hand of the Father. But I'm not. I'm right here on 34th Street and 8th Avenue. Amen. So how can I dwell in the secret place of the Most High? How can I abide under the shadow of the Most High God if God is in heaven and I'm here on the earth? Amen. Make sense? Something to think about, right? Go to John chapter 1. Let's find out where we find that answer in John chapter 1. In John chapter 1, it says, in the beginning, right, was what? The Word. It says, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Right? It says, he was. It says, he, the word, was. In Hebrews 13, 8, it says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and, right? So if he was, that means he is and he will be. Amen? Amen? So I find that God and his word are what? Right? So if I want to dwell in the secret place of the Most High and abide under the shadow of, your, of the Almighty, then all I have to do is get into his word. Amen? Amen? So I know that to be in conjunction with God, to be in, 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 in lockstep with God, all I have to do is get into his word. Amen? Dwell in his word, I dwell in him. Because he and his word are one. But how do I actually do that? Where's my instruction in the Bible that tells me how I should actually dwell in the secret place of the Most High by a body under the Almighty, the shadow of the Almighty? It's found in Proverbs chapter 4. Turn there. Proverbs chapter 4. And when you get there, say amen. Proverbs chapter 4. Come on, Elder. Got Proverbs chapter 4? Look at verse 20. It says, my son, it says, attend to my word. It didn't say to know the word. Amen. It didn't say to occasionally peruse the word. It said, attend to my word. It says, incline your ears to my sayings. Let them, them what? My words, my sayings, amen, 
not depart from your eyes. It says, keep them, them what? My words, my sayings, and where? The midst of your heart. Why? Because my words, my sayings are life to those that find them and health or medicine to all their flesh. Amen? So it's an instructional thing. It tells me that I should stay in the word. He says it another way in Joshua 1 and 8. He says it like this. He says, this book of the law shall not depart from before your eyes, but you should meditate day and night that you may observe to do according to all that's written in it, and then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall have what? Good success. God says, I'm a God, I change not. So he says the same thing in thousands, many, many, many different ways. Why? Because he's a manifold God. Amen. He says the same, give another example. Psalm 1. Amen. Go to Psalm 1. He says it the same way in Psalm number 1. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. It says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he shall meditate how often? Day and night. And he says, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That's another way of saying he's going to dwell in the secret place of the most high and abide under the shadow of the Almighty. How? By dwelling in his word. So if you ain't got the word, you ain't got God. Because God and his word are one. That's why you read your Bible every day. That's why you pray in the spirit every day. That's why you do this thing every day. Because it says, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide. That's a qualifier. If you dwell, you shall abide. If you don't dwell, you will not abide. Amen? This is serious business. And sometimes I think we take the, we take the word of God for granted. You pray every day. You pray in the spirit every day. This thing is a lifestyle that we do. That's why it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, for we walk by and not by. This is a lifestyle. This is who you are in Christ. This is what you do in Christ. This is what makes you unique from all the rest of the world. You have a covenant with God. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're not trying to become righteous. You are righteous. Amen. He said in first in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, for he made him who knows sin to become sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. I am, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I ain't trying to be righteous. I ain't got to be made right. I've been made righteous through the shed blood of Jesus. I'm a bad dude. Not because of me, because of this word. You a bad somebody. Not because of you, because of this word. Because what Jesus Christ did for you on that cross. Hallelujah. Amen. So it says, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. What is that? That's talking about your protection. Amen. He says, my God, in him I will trust. And then he says in verse 3, he says, surely. You know what surely means? It means no doubt about it. Amen. It says, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowl and from the perilous pestilence. Surely he shall deliver you. He shall deliver you. That's future tense. That's how you know this is old covenant. Amen. Because in Colossians 1, he says, he has delivered us from the power of darkness. So ain't with us, ain't no shall. Done deal. He says, he shall deliver you from the power of darkness. I am delivered from the power of darkness. You are delivered from the power of darkness, man, and you are delivered from the snare of the fowl. A snare is a small trap. Amen? The fowl is the one who sets the trap. Amen? That's talking about who? That's talking about the devil, right? He said he shall cover you with his feathers 
and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Go to Ephesians chapter 6. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Ephesians chapter 6. Amen. Before you go there, I want to go back to something real quick. Because I was in Proverbs 420, I want to make this point first. We'll go back to Proverbs 420 and read it to you. It says, My son, give attention to my words, incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. It says, For they are life. Amen. And Deuteronomy 30, 19 and 20, it says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses, therefore choose what? Life. How do I choose life? How do I choose life? I choose life when I choose his word because Jesus said in John 14, 6, that I am the way, I am the truth. And I am the life. So if I choose Jesus, I choose his word. And when I choose his word, I choose life. Amen? Amen. He says, therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. So this ain't just about me or you. This is about them kids. This is about your children and your children's children and your children's children's children. So you have the ability, amen, by dwelling in the secret place of the most high, by being a doer of God's word, to choose life not only for yourself, but for your children and your children's children. This is serious. Amen. Look at how important you are to God. You have the ability to leave a legacy, a legacy of the word of God. And everything that's involved in that word of God, we should be passing on to our children. So if we can't pass on something to our children and to our children's children based on something that we don't know, I got to know this word. I got to dwell. I got to abide. I got to attend. I got to meditate day and night that I may observe you according to all that's written in it so that I will make my way prosper and make their way prosperous. Amen? Amen. Serious. Amen? It's not just about us. There's a legacy. There's an inheritance that has to be passed home. But if you don't know the word, if you don't dwell on the word, if you don't abide in the word, how are you going to get your children to abide in the word? Amen. We got to set that example, family. Huh? We got to be on point. We got to be serious about what we do. This is not, not just a perfunctory thing that we come out on Sunday morning, amen, and get a little word and, you know, do a little church and hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, you know. And, and I've been, been there, done that. I was raised in that kind of an environment in the Baptist church. Much love to the Baptist church, but the Baptist church was all about when we all get to heaven. That's what it was about. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows from the throne of God. That's what I was raised on. So for us, everything was over there after a while on the other side. But guess what? In those particular days where that came from, there wasn't much more than after a while over there on the other side. But that's not the case now. Amen. Amen? For the Bible says, whom the sun set free is free indeed. I be free. Amen? You be free. Why? Because of, because of the sacrifice that Jesus made on that cross. Amen? God is good. God is always good. So it says choose life. And Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Amen? No man can come to the Father except through me. So it says in Deuteronomy 30, 19, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and courage. Therefore choose life that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God that you may obey his voice, which is the word, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land. Pick up on this. 
that you may dwell, live in, dwell in, abide in the land which God swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. What land? What's the land? What's the secret place? It's found in Deuteronomy 8. Deuteronomy 8. Let me read it to you, chapter one, uh, verse 1. It says, every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the what? The land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. What fathers? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right? Galatians 3.13, New Testament. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being murdered, cursed for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree, so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. Amen. So the land that he promised to Abraham is the land he promised to us through Christ Jesus. So if Abraham got paid, they got paid. Amen. And watch this. The blessing of Abraham was not a spiritual blessing because Abraham was spiritually dead. He had, no, he had no spiritual connection with God. His only connection with God was material. Why? Wow, Christ had not come. Can't connect to God spiritually except through Christ Jesus. And Christ Jesus was a long way after Abraham. So when we talk about the blessing of Abraham, he's talking about a material blessing. Amen? That stops all that poverty mentality stuff. You supposed to have some stuff. You supposed to have some money. You supposed to have some nice clothes. You supposed to drive around in a nice car. You supposed to have every good and perfect gift that come down from the Father of God, whom there is no variation, no shadow of turning. That's the Bible. That's the word. You supposed to have it. It's your paid for by Jesus. Amen. He said, "All the silver and all the gold are mine. The cattle on a thousand hills are mine." I got everything, and since you are in company with me, all that I have, all that I have, I give it to you freely, willingly, and was paid for by the blood of Jesus. Amen? The land, praise God. Deuteronomy 8, chapter, verse 3. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Watch this protection. He said, your, he to the children of Israel. He said, your garments did not wear out, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. And you should know in your heart that as a man chases his son, so the Lord God chases you. Now watch this. Here's the land. Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountain and springs that flow out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity and which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. If, it was, if they got blessed like that, and the Bible tells me I got a better covenant based on better promise, at the very least I should get this. Plus, because that's old school. I'm new school. That's old covenant. I'm new covenant. Better promise. Better covenant. Be Come on now. They got paid. They got paid. If they got paid, you know we're supposed to get paid. Amen. Now watch this. Verse 19. It says, when you have eaten and are full. Amen. Then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Verse 11. Beware that you not, do not forget the Lord by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, his statutes, which I command you today. My, my son, attend to my word. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. 
Meditate day and night that you may observe you according to all is written, and then you shall make your way prosperous, and you shall have good success. Blessed be the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but in his delight is the law of the Lord, and in his law shall he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, bringing forth his fruit in this season. His leaves shall not wither, and whatever you put your hands to shall prosper. That's the word. Amen? That's the word of God. Hallelujah. Beware you that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes, which I command you today, lest when you have eaten and are full, watch this, and have built beautiful houses. Your Christian should be popping. Huh? And dwell in them. And when your herds and your flocks multiply, so that tells me that God is not a God of addition. God is a God of multiplication. Two plus two is four and two times two is four. Three, three plus three is six, but three times three is nine. Four plus four is eight, but four times four is sixteen. Five plus five is ten, but five times five is twenty-five. Six plus six is twelve, but six times six is thirty-six. Hallelujah. So God is a God of multiplication. And when you give, then it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, chained together, running over. God promises in his word to multiply you. Huh? But you can't be scared. You can't be looking at what's left in you after you pay the bills. Give it to God and release your faith. Father, I thank you. Did you say in your word? Then if I give it, shall be given unto me good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and run or shall men give back to my bosom. For what measure I meet is measured back unto me. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, when your herds and your flocks multiply, watch this. And when your silver and gold are multiplied, and the, all that you have multiplied, it said, when your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God, that means you start tripping. <laughs> Amen. Watch this. Who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led you through that great and terrible wilderness in which were fiery servants and scorpions and thirsty land where there was no water. We went through slavery 246 years. Excuse me. From 1619 to 1865. That's what we went through. That's what our parents, that's what our, 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 our posture, that's what they went through. And yet here we are today. Like Maya Angelou said, and we still rise, and still we rise. Been through all that stuff. Right? That's what he saw. See, we can relate to that. Amen? He says, who led you through that great and terrible wilderness. That was a terrible wilderness. Amen? And you would have thought that after 246 years of slavery in 1865 when the Emancipation Proclamation was signed, they would say, okay, right? After a war, a civil war, it was something like 750 to 800,000 people died. You would have said, they would have said, okay, we were wrong. Now, y'all free, go pursue the American dream. They didn't do that. What followed was 100 years of Jim Crow. Come on. Amen. Soldiers went into the war in World War II and World War I and came back and got lynched in their uniform. Amen. All our women that were raped in front of our eyes made you stand there and watch it. You talk about a great and terrible wilderness, and now we've gotten to this place where we in Christ Jesus, we sitting here on 34th Street, they've ever chilling with the lights on and the air on, everything is good, and you ain't gonna take care of business now. You gonna faint now, huh? You gonna give up now? You gonna get after they put in all that work, after they put in all that time, after they went through all that stuff, and now we sitting here on the precipice of prosperity. We sit on the precipice of every good and perfect gift to come down the Father, and we gonna we gonna we gonna we gonna we gonna do what? We gonna give in now? Not me. I'm going forward. You can come with me if you want, but I'm going forward. I will, it's like the Bible said, I will not die but live, and I will declare the worst of the Lord. 
Come on now. Come on now. It's their time. Amen. Praise God. Who led you through that great and terrible wilderness in which, in which were fiery servants and scorpions and thirsty land where there was no water who brought water for you out of a flinty rock who fed you in the wilderness which your, I'm sorry, in the wilderness with manna which your fathers did not know that he might humble you and that he might test you to do good in the land. Then you sit in your heart. My power and the might of my hands has gained me this well. Trip in. But Lord, he, gives, he said, but you shall remember the Lord your God. It says, for it, he who gives you power to get well. Power to get well. Power to get well. Power to get wealth. You know the difference between wealth and money? Wealth is something that you pass on. Money is something that you have. Rich is something that, uh, that you have in your hand right now. But wealth, that's, that, 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 that goes to something that you leave for somebody behind you. Amen? So you can't leave something somebody behind you. Leave, to leave something for somebody that's coming behind you, you got to have at least enough for yourself and send you something to leave over. So everybody that be chilling about this thing, about this prosperity, I don't know where they get all this. Cause it's, see, they talk that talk, but they can't deny it's in the Bible. Yeah. See, they talk that talk. It ain't about prosperity. It ain't about this. It is for me. No, I'm serious. I'm 70 years old. I'm still out there grinding. So it is. Let me tell you something. If it ain't about some money for me, and it ain't about some money for you, it's not the only thing. We understand that. We understand that. But guess what? When you get to a certain point in time, man, the most important thing in your life is having some cash. Because you got to make them co pays at the doctor. And that medicine ain't free. You understand? So when you're young, 25, 30, you don't think about those kind of things. You really don't think about those things. But the Bible says that when you've eaten, you should be full. And every need you have should be met. And every desire should be fulfilled. That's just the word of God. So why are we shying away from all that stuff? You're supposed to have a 55-inch TV up on your wall. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Because the material things and the blessings are not for the world, they're for the church. Amen. The only thing the world got coming is Romans 10, 9, and 10. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe not that God has risen from that, you shall be saved. Period. End of conversation. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. That's all the world got coming. Everything else, that's for the church. That's for us. That's for you. Once they come into the family, then they have access to those things. And if Jesus cannot put those things in the, in the world through the church, he'll put them in through, through, you know, through, through, through an unsaved man. But that doesn't mean it's for them. That doesn't mean it's for them. It's intended for you. It's intended for me. Why? Covenant. Covenant. Because he swore in his word. And the Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he got to do it or he can no longer be God. He puts his very existence on the line for your blessing. He puts the very, he, he puts the, his very existence on the line for your, for your longevity. Deliverance, safety, sounds of mind, preservation, healing. He puts himself on the line. So when you walk over to that, to the, to the left of this podium, and you get laid hand, get hands laid on you, you should expect. You should expect it. And that's a big reason why many people don't receive it because they don't have an expectation for their healing. They don't have an expectation for their prosperity. You understand? You have to expect it because you trust in this word. How did I get to the point where I trust in this word so much, Lord? Because I attend to his word. I incline my ears to his sayings. I do not let them depart from my eyes. I keep them in this mouth because they're life to me. I found in their health medicine to all my flesh. Amen. There's a payoff from doing this stuff. Amen. Sow your seed in the morning. The seed can be the word of God. Sow your seed in the morning and in the evening withhold not your bread. For you don't know which one, whether this or that, but it's coming back. Cast your bread upon the water. It will come back after many days. Blessings, man. You supposed to be blessed. You supposed to be healed. You supposed to. A woman said to me last night, man, how old are you? She, I said, how do you think I am? 
She said, about 48? I said, praise you. Bless you, girl. Bless you, girl. I ain't even gonna tell you because I don't want to blow you. I don't want to blow your day. Amen. But she was saying to me, like, you know, I get a little play with you. Get, no, babe, I'm married. I ain't like that. But she said, how old are you? I said, man, please. I'm seven years old. Seven, seven now. Pop it. Amen. Amen. I'm 70, man. But I got that Moses spirit. My eyes are not 120. My eyes are not dim. Natural force is not baby, baby. Got it going on, got it popping. I'm going to look, be better looking better at 80 than I am at 70. Amen. I went, I went somewhere, and somebody said, to, well, this is, I, I, went, I had to get therapy on my leg. I pulled the muscle about a month ago. And I went, I went, I went to, um, to a physical therapist, young lady, nice young lady. And she said to me, uh, uh, she, she treated my leg, right? She was treating me, right? And she said to me, you're in pretty good shape for a guy your age. <laughs> what she really was saying? She said, you fine. <laughs> See, that was a code. She said, you fine. I said, I feel you. She said, you fine. See, they, she's a professional, so she had to say it in a way to see that, you know, she had to say it in a way, but I know what she was saying. <laughs> huh? When she pushed, she rolled them legs up, she moved. Hey. I'm mad, baby. Ain't like that. Hey, Amen. You fine. But they should be telling you that. See, because in Christ Jesus, every woman fine in Christ Jesus. Ain't got to do what you have to do. Your, in, in Christ Jesus, everybody fine. Because the Bible said that in, in the beginning, in Genesis, he said that everything he made, he thought it was very good. So if you're in Christ Jesus, everything in you is very good. You ain't just good, you ain't very good. You ain't just fine, you very fine. You ain't got it going on, you got it going on big time. But if you don't receive it by faith, you understand? If you don't receive it, then God can't drop it in your lap. He's already given you the power of darkness. But if you don't take it, so you got to stand in that mirror every single day. I'm prepared for this assignment. I'm anointed to handle it. I will win because God is with me. I am qualified, I am prepared, and I am anointed. And no weapon formed against me shall prosper because I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. If you got it, say amen. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Let's wrap this thing up. I wish I could teach again next week because I, I got a lot of stuff to give y'all. Ephesians chapter 10, talk about your protection. Right goes hand in hand. You know the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Got it? It says, finally, my brother, it says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Talk about your protection. It says, put on the whole arm of God that you may able, be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the daughters of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in, wickedness in the heavenly places. So watch this. That's telling me that God, there are ranks of demonic spirits that are raised against you. Amen? Principalities, powers, might, and dominion. So every place that you go, there's a demonic spirit that's there to encroach against your life. Ranks of demonic spirits. Not just a few, ranks. Different levels. Amen. How do I overcome those things? By attending to his word. By inclining my ears to his sayings. By never letting them depart from my eyes. By casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. That's why it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that no temptation, trial, or test has overtaken you except that which is common to man. Which means if it came upon you, you wasn't the first. It says, but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted, tried, or tested above that which you were able, with the temptation, will make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Which means if it comes upon you, you can handle it. I don't care what it is. 
you can handle it. If you couldn't handle it, then God wouldn't let it come upon you. So I don't care what that doctor said. You got three months to live. By his stripes, I'm healed. Amen. He might give you a truth, but God's word is the final truth. He might give you a fact, but God's word is the truth. And you take that truth and keep applying it to that fact. You keep taking that truith and keep applying it to that fact and keep taking it to that keep taking that truth and applying it to that fact. So later that fact is going to turn into that truth. That's what faith is about. I care what they said. I care what they, I don't care what the, I don't care what that I don't say not to go to the doctor. You should go to the doctor. That's wisdom. Go to the doctor. Take your medicine. Do everything you're supposed to do. But at the end of the day, the only thing that's going to get you through this thing is, is this word. Because healing is in this word. Medicine is in this word. They treat. See, the doctors, see, the doctors, his, the doctor's function is to slow that thing down till you get the word on it. Because it's got a head start on you. Amen. Some people, they, 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 they don't use good judgment because they think they're going to do what they want. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Medicine, treatments, those things are good. You should do those things. Why? Because that thing got a head start. So you go, ho, 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 ho. See what that thing's got a hold? The, the, the mess will slow that thing down. Now I'm going to get that word. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you because I'm healed in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you since you were in him and living my destruction. I'm healed from the crown of his soul my feet. Them are praying to speak. I'm going to share they get shot now. Bro, I'm going to seal that thing. The Bible says that we seal with those people. So you will be able to seal those things in our lives. Seal your prosperity. Seal your blessings. Seal your, your, your health. Seal everything that's good and perfect from the God, from the Father of life. Praise God. It's a practical thing that we have to do. It's a practical thing that we have to do. Amen? Because we're under his protection. Praise God. He said, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Your, your, your adversary is not, amen, people. Your adversary is principalities and powers and rules of the darkness against spirits of hosts of witness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day and having undone all to stand. It says, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, this is key, it says, above all, taking the shield of faith, which will, which with, with which, excuse me, you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. But how can I take the shield of faith if I don't know how to walk by faith? How can I take the shield of faith if I don't understand the principles of faith? Praise God. If I don't understand that faith comes by hearing, if I don't understand that faith is released from the words of your mouth, that there's a patience component, an endurance component of faith. So if I don't know about faith, if I don't, if I don't study the, the word of faith, amen, how on earth is it possible for me, for me to take the shield of faith when I don't even know what it's all about? That's why you come to church. Yeah, Crenshaw. Because our theme is what? We walk by faith and not by sight. If you learn how to walk by faith, then you take the shield of faith, which, which you will quench all the fire dust of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, right? And the sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of God. Praying, which means you need to have a prayer life. It says praying with all prayer and supplication. How? In the spirit. And the only person that can pray in the spirit is a born again believer because he's the only one that qualified to be filled with the spirit. So you stay at a very exclusive club, a very exclusive spot, because you're born again. You have to, you have access to the Holy Spirit, amen. And when you, you when you pray with the Holy Spirit, it says being watchful to this end with all perseverance. You persevere in the Spirit, amen. Pray in the Spirit, five minutes a day, ten minutes a day, fifteen minutes a day. Whenever you think about it, pray in the Spirit. See, my thing is this. See, when the, when, the, when the enemy shows up, the word of God should come up. You know what I mean? It should be automatic. Amen. When you get a thought, an idea, or a suggestion, and it comes up, the word of, when it shows up, the word of God should come up. No, I'll receive that. You're going to die, and not me. I shall not die, but live in the clear of the world, so not me. 
No, 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 no. I cast that down. Amen. Thought coming to your mind. No, I don't receive that. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I'm blessed of God. I'm born of the Spirit of God. You can't, you can't do nothing with me. Praise God. Jesus shed his pure blood on my behalf. I might have life and have it more abundantly. What are you talking about? Broke. Broke. I'm a giver. The Bible says it shall be given unto me. So I bind that thought of being broken. And I'll never be broken another day of my life. I'm a giver. It's given unto me good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. I so bound it. I rebound. I give tears. My God makes all grace abound towards me. So I have all sufficient for all things abound in every good work. Mr. Devil, in Jesus' name. But if I don't know that, how can I say that? If I, if I don't understand how to release my faith, how can I take up the shield of faith? Amen. So most of the Bible, you got work to do. This, ain't it. this is how you get to long life. Amen. And let me tell you something. If I hadn't found this out through this ministry and through this word, if, not that this is the only one, but if I hadn't found this out, you never know, but it's a pretty good chance I would not be standing here today. I mean, I wouldn't be, I, would, I don't think I'd be here today. I've been in this church for, since, since day one for 17 years. And in seven years, man, there's some stuff that come against me. But guess what? Man, I'm still standing. Man, I'm still standing. Why? Why am I standing? Because, man, because I knew the word. I went to a doctor one day, and the doctor looked at me and said, man, you got something in your body that can kill you. You got something going on in your body that can kill you. I said, okay, no problem, right? He said, you got any questions? I said, no, I ain't got no questions. I ain't had no questions, not because I didn't want to know, but I knew I had the word. And I was locked up, I was locked up into this word enough. I had, I had attended to that word. I inclined my ears to those things. Amen? I didn't let them depart from my eyes. I kept them in my heart. So I had my confession already. Jesus is the Lord of my life. Since disease had no power over me, I'm forgiven and free from sin and guilt. I'm dead to sin. I'm alive and righteous. I'm free from unforgiven and strife. I forgive others. Christ has forgiven me. The love of God has shed upon my heart by the Holy Spirit. Jesus bore my sins and bound me. Therefore, I'm dead to sin. I'm alive under God and by his stripes I'm here. Jesus bore my sins and carried my pain. Therefore, I give no pain to sins of pain for God's sin and blood in him. Father, because you are I'm overcome. Overcome the world, the flesh, the devil by the blood of the Lord of my testimony. Lord, I thank you for giving me abundant life. I receive it after you would in the fills of every all of my body, bringing healing him. Father, I attend to your word, and I incline my hands to your saints. I will not let them depart my eyes. I keep them in this mind, their life in all my flesh. I said that stuff over and over and over and over and over till I got tired. And then I went and got me some water <laughs> and drank it. And I went right back to a body. I speak the word of faith to you. I demand that every internal, all the form of prayer work for you, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I charge you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and by the authority of the Holy Word, be healed and made whole in Jesus' name. Father, I resist the enemy in every form it comes against me. I require my body to be strong and healthy. I force which I reject the curse, and I force life in this body in Jesus' name. Therefore, I shall not die, but live and declare the verse of the Lord. You've forgiven all my nickels, healed all my diseases, redeemed my life from the struggle, satisfied my mind with good things, so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. Lord, you bless my food. Bless my water, take the sins away from me. Therefore, I will fulfill the number of my days in health. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm taking the shield of faith. But I can't take the shield of faith if I don't know the word of faith. Amen? I can't do it if I don't know it. I can't apply it if I don't know it. Amen? And that's why he says, my son, attend to my word. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and help to all their flesh. Amen? Amen. Every head bowed, every eye <laughs> Hallelujah. Thanks for joining us. Our hope is that you received something that you can apply to your life and strengthen your faith. At Crenshaw Christian Center, New York, we believe that the Word of God is practical for everyday application. If you'd like to support the ministry with your tithe and offering, you can mail them to Crenshaw Christian Center, New York, 450 7th Avenue, Suite 2111, New York, New York, 10123. 
We now offer the convenience of text and online giving, one of the most secure ways to give. Try it now. Simply text East G from your smartphone to 28950 and follow the prompts. You can even specify a designation for your gift. Text East G for general donation, East T for tithe, or East O for offering. Each transaction needs to be its own individual text message. You can also visit our website, BrentrarChristianCenterEast.org, and click the Give tab to begin your experience. Set up recurring donations or give one-time gifts. This experience is easy to use, secure, and requires a one-time registration only. Giving the second time is even easier. Simply text East G to 28950 with all your information securely stored. We appreciate your continued support and stand in agreement with you for the manifold return in your life. Thanks again for watching. And remember, we walk by faith, not by sight.